One of the best known models to explain how role playing games work is a GNS model. This week I'm going to break it down into its three components and explain what they mean. And we're going to start with gamism. In my System Matters episodes, I touched on GNS. GNS stands for Gamist Narrativist Simulationist. And this is a continuation of Ron Edwards' essays about gaming. It is important to notice that these labels, like Gamist, Narrativist, Simulationist, represent labels for decisions, not really for games or people. So to say that a game or a person is, for example, Gamist, is a way of t uh, describing the types of decision making that player strives for, or that that game facilitates. Now even back in the days of the threefold model, Gamist was the first role playing style to be identified and it is also considered to be the most self-evident. But this initial categorization can be dismissive, not only of the gamers themselves, but of those elements. So what do we mean when we say Gamist? Well, GNS defines Gamus as operating on both the real social level of the players and the imaginary level in-game. First of all, the players have knowledge of the game and its rules. They have strategies that they are able to employ through this. They have to step on up to the game. In this style of play, the step on up level is from the players, their performance, their strategy, their courage. Now this is something referred to as performance with risk. The risk itself can vary, but it is at the player level and is often a minor social reward. The players must be willing to accept this risk and this is where the fun in this style of play can be found. Risk is often seen as enjoyable in many forms of human activities, not only this one. And secondly, gamism also operates on an in-game level. This is a challenge or the focus of what the players are stepping up to. This challenge of course could be very interesting. It could be thematic or compelling within the narrative of the story. However, it is, in this game, serving as a situation to which the players are stepping up to. What ends up being very interesting about the gamist style of play is that the rewards for completing a challenge are both the reward that the character receives for accomplishing their goal and the out-of-game reward that the player receives for successfully stepping up. These essays certainly don't end there. They go into far more detail on aspects of the gamist style of play that we simply don't have time to cover here, but I'll touch on a few just to explain what it's about. These essays cover the terms of success both in and out of game, competition as well as cooperation, the importance of choice which is critical in a gamist style of play, winning the game, which actually is possible in some games such as Kobolds Ate My Baby, as well as the difficulty and reward systems, which also represent both in and out of game elements. Now the gamist style is often seen in a negative light, and this is because there are some negative aspects of it which are very prevalent in our culture, or at least seen that as being very prevalent. For example, there is hardcore play where the, this sacrifices the exploration, mechanics are seen only from the uh, metagame point of view, and player at the player levels it can be heavily about posturing. The term munchkin often refers to the most hardcore of the gamist outlook, but there's also turning other players, power gaming, rules lawyering. Slightly different than power gaming is breaking the game. This makes the influence of others ineffectual in terms of the context of the game. It tends to make also games unplayable after it has happened. Gameism also tends to overtake other styles of play. Once one person decides to step it up, it reframes the fiction of the entire game. It's worth noting briefly that only the gamist style calls for balance and even then what is being balanced often is difficult to define as player goals can vary. While it's not without its issues, one of the major advantages of the gamist style of play is that it's very easy to explain to new players. There are also often games that focus on having a fun experience and other styles of play sometimes do not. While they're often judged rather harshly, they also have the longest history of play within our hobby. There is much more to gamism than what I've covered here. Even the resources I have provided are only the beginning if you wish to know more. Next, however, we will be covering the narrativist style of play. Relevant links are below, and as always, I hope that your next game is even better than your last.